Yes, my peoples, it's T, and I'm back with another Apprentice reaction. So, week 11, we are on to the interviews, and we have an all-female final ahead of us. So, yes, let's get straight into this. All right, so interviews, I'm going to do this slightly differently to how I do it for the, the regular um, episodes. So I'm going to start off talking about basically each candidate and then break it down towards the end. Um, so first off, Marnie, 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 Marnie. So she had a boxing business plan. Her business plan was all about essentially creating, essentially just creating a boxing gym. Um, that's what I took it as. Um, and to me, it sounds like a normal gym. What makes it special? Don't know what makes it special. But um, and she wanted to, you know, expand into, for example, central London but she had 21 ever gyms. There's 21 ever gyms literally in around the, the space that she wanted to expand into. So it's a definitely a very oversaturated market. So um, yeah, very, very strange business idea for me. I, I don't know how this is a business. It's literally, it's, it's a gym, but a boxing gym. Boxing gyms already exist. What makes her special? Um, what is her USP, her unique selling point? Um, yeah, I know that she is a gold medalist boxer herself, um, but yeah, is she going to train every single individual that comes to the gym? Nope. Um, but, yo, listen, she done very well with all these grants that she's getting. Like, how the hell do I get grants for all my for all my ideas? Um, literally, she's just getting free money, like a quarter of a million here, a quarter of a million there. And these ain't, obviously, she's getting some loans that she has to pay back. But she's getting some grants. Grants mean that money's free. It's yours. Invest that quarter of a million and give back to the business or back to the community. So that's very good on her for that. Um but wow 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 and this point i'm about to mention now seems like a, a common theme amongst all of all of them but she doesn't want to pay her staff who's going to work for you or work for your business if they're not getting paid yes you're going to offer them a free gym membership yes they're going to have access to all the members of the gym to try and you know to be their personal trainer or whatever um but that's not enough they need they need at least a base salary to be there in the first place otherwise it's ridiculous um, so yeah, that was, that was, that was Marnie, um, moving on to Rochelle, um, her business was essentially hair and beauty or something along those lines anyway, um, hair salons, hair salons, um, she had the most ridiculous numbers, uh, <laughs> the most ridiculous numbers she wanted, at the moment she makes 150k, um, I think profit, is that profit or turnover? I think 150k a year, um, she's been basically running a good business for about 10 to 14 years. Um, that is a kind of a low margin right now. And she and she expects within one year, she's going to grow that to 1.5 million. Is she mad? Is she okay? <laughs> um, I laugh out loud at the um, interview between Rochelle and Karen. That was hilarious. The way how Karen just ripped into her. Um, and Linda said, um, this business plan is unrealistic. And rubbish <laughs> she just said it straight like this is rubbish it's unrealistic and it's rubbish um so yeah that was rochelle moving on to victoria um so she went in on the bat saying yo i've had no interviews i'm not been to no uni i've done nothing i haven't done anything like this before i'm new to this i'm new to this i used to be a flight attendant and that's it and she wanted to launch a sweet a basically a pick and mix business now the second i heard that i was like this don't sound like a business idea to me. Pick and mix. Like, huh? How's that really sustainable? Or, you know, like how's that like a big enough idea to grow and to make somebody significant amount of money? But anyway, she has an online company which sets up, which sorry, it sells pick and mix essentially. Um, there's so many companies that, that, that do this as well. Like if you go on like a website in the UK like Thoughtful or Virgin experience days all that stuff they sell these 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 little pick and mix boxes or you go into a tesco or, or a cinema basic but anyway she wants to set up a kiosk at, at malls again these already exist there's already kiosks that sells pick and mix what makes her pick and mix special don't know she don't make the sweets herself um and her actual past experience has, has no relation to this current idea as well no relation to it at all like nothing um so um how is she going to be an expert in what she wants to sell she doesn't really have much experience in it so um it's very surprising to me that she think this is a big business idea um 
and her numbers were way off like way off how do you how do you first of all not incorporate paying paying people um sorry not incorporate stock there's no stock so if you know stock you can't sell nothing that's a business so there's no stock and how do you incorporate um paying for the chaos something around the rent the rent she put the rent as 90k a year when it's actually 300k a year big difference that's like a quarter of a million difference so insane um and when she started crying i was like i roll <laughs> here we go again um i get it i get it you put you know you put a lot of passion into your business and if you're getting told it's not good it's gonna hurt i get it but boo 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 but um and also the grammatical and spelling errors honestly for me as an adult and personally for me poor grammar for me is an absolute turn off turns me right off um and i, and I know it probably shouldn't but i just start to judge that person instantly it, it just makes them not seem like a credible individual especially if they're meant to be in business i cannot trust you if you can't spell something right now i get it yes it's fine we're all human you can make some mistakes that's fine but if it's big consistent mistakes all the time you you unless you have a valid reason like you actually have you know a learning difficulty or english is not your first language or whatever fair enough but if, if come on you, come on um anyway and she has no unique selling point she just get in a bunch of sweets and put them in a box and make them look nice that's not a business anyway moving on to megan megan's 25 years old she runs a dessert cafe um for me this idea is too similar to last year's winners in my opinion um what's her name again um Har harpreet harpreet she had a dessert shop that one last year she ain't winning this and hers is crazy idea so it's by day it's a dessert cafe and by night it's a cocktail bar what the hell um anyway and her business plan was only 14 pages as per the words of karen brady rubbish <laughs> rubbish um talking about a 600k turnover with no explanation how are you turning over that explain it anyway moving on to danny um also not good at numbers to be fair this seems to be a common theme amongst these these candidates not good at numbers at all but apparently knows how to run a business make it make sense make it make sense like, how can you run a business if you don't know if you don't know your numbers uh, come on literally business is literally math um anyway she has a hair extension business and um yeah i i get it hair extensions are expensive i've i've seen the prices of hair extensions um obviously i don't participate in that myself because i don't need to um it's not aimed at me or my demographic or market but <laughs> i know i know from experience um that hair extensions are very expensive um so you can make a lot of money from that but at the same time nah nah um of course she's always waffling in a business plan and all of the properties and like she got asked some questions around oh what's your turnover what's your profit and she's like it's probably this it's maybe that how can you come to a business interview without knowing your own numbers of your own business like what the hell um and then she wants to spend 84 percent of the quarter of a million on hair where's where's the marketing budget where's the, the budget for you know forever aspects of the business to grow it how how are people gonna what's the point in having all this stock yeah if no one if no one actually knows that you have this stock or no one wants your stock you need to market yourself to make yourself different and stand out so um and the fact that she didn't even know the difference between turnover and profit as well as a businesswoman apparently great at business um even with that business you, you know what the difference is of turnover and profit yes a business a business can a business can turn over a million pound um but once you pay all your staff and you pay all your stocks and all that stuff the, the money you have left over from after paying everything off is your profit and that could end up that could be 100k because you're spending a lot of money on the business you get me so everyone knows that even i know that i'm not a businessman or maybe i am <laughs> um anyway and then later on she mentioned it was 10 she, wa she wanted to use 10k for ads um like what 10k for advertising cool and she wants to she wants to reach millions of people okay cool makes sense anyway um her that's gonna last her literally like a week <laughs> two weeks um literally this is why organizations spend literally their marketing budgets of millions their marketing budgets are millions because that is that's essentially what kind of almost separates your business uh, literally you could have the same product as somebody else and your product could actually not be that great 
but your marketing is so good, you make the public believe it's great and that one will sell more. Um, so marketing is, is very important. Um, and her grasp and understanding of, um, of stuff is just not great. Her English isn't great either. Like what is under ambitious? You mean over ambitious? Maybe she was nervous because she was flopping. I don't know. But anyway, that was all of the candidates. Um, now, my thoughts on this, the second part here. So, obviously, this year, they had the interviews at Hilo in East London. So, there's no Gherkin this year. I'm not sure why there wasn't at the Gherkin, the iconic Gherkin building. Um, and Alan Sugar has invested three million of his own cash. Three million of his own cash. Or maybe it's BBC cash. I don't know. Um, so far in 11 winners of The Apprentice. Now, this year, my opinion, he should be able to forfeit any investment because every week I say this, this week again was so rubbish. I know we look forward to the interviews, but even this was dry for me, just dry. Like it, everyone was so crap. There's no one that stood out. Like nobody had any good points to their business. Uh, it's just rubbish, absolutely rubbish. So he should be able to be like, you know what? Cancel the series. I'm not invested in nobody because <laughs> this is literally going to waste his money. Um, also, on a side note, this may be controversial to say, but I'm going to say it because, get me, this is this is my channel, my platform. But, yo, girls be emotional. Girls be emotional. I bet they're all going to cry at, at some point. They're all, all going to cry at some point, ain't they? Like, I get it. It's your business and you care. But, yo, you're in an interview, man. Compose yourself. Compose yourself. Um, anyway, also... And next thing I want to say is in business, everybody knows you need to have a unique selling point. You need to have one and you need to know what it is because ultimately that is your business. Um, everybody has ideas. Unless your idea is, 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 it's in the name, unique. If it's not unique, you definitely need some unique element. Um, so it, you either have a unique idea that's, that no one is doing or you have an idea like that somebody else has, but you have a unique element to it like your customer service is just the best or you have a slight you you have a slightly bigger reach same business as someone else but you have a slightly bigger reach like a bigger access to the country or whatever or slightly cheaper like you know you have something unique to, to make your business stand out from the rest so every, that's basic and none of them seem to have that not one of them could literally say what is their unique selling point so trash trash anyway let's go on to who went home this week um, and who are who's in the final? So, number one, as expected, Victoria went home. Victoria went home. Um, Victoria went home. So, obviously, I'm gonna bring up this picture on the screen now because these were the final five. So, Victoria was the first person to to, went, to to go home. She is the one in the orange dress for anyone who doesn't know. Um, she went home. Um, she didn't really have a business, to be honest, so I'm not surprised she went home first. Um, like, pick and mix, the hell? Come on. Um, and then after that, who was next? Danny went home. So Danny's the one in the middle in the green dress. Um, she, it's about time she went home, to be fair. It's about time. She was annoying. And you know what's even more annoying? They should have kept Simba. I guarantee, I can't guarantee, but I bet his business idea, I bet his business idea would have been better than than hers because she, she was a mess her business plan was a mess her idea was a mess it's just it just rubbish should, they should have definitely kept Simba because he would have been probably more of a challenge um, to the other ideas and third to go home was <laughs> Megan as well so I don't have much to say about her her idea again I told you before it was too similar to last year's idea he was not interested in, in doing that again for a second year running, especially when the numbers were crap anyway. So the two people that did make it into the finals are, of course, Rochelle and Marnie. Um, to be fair, I am not feeling any of them, any of them. And to be honest, let's hope the final is still interesting nonetheless. But I don't know who's going to win out of these because they're both of them. They're both of the ideas for me. Rubbish. Um, the hair salon thing whatever there's a million hair salons what makes it special is it it's not even making that much money and she wants to expand a new open a new salon every six months into belgravia as well which is like the poshest part of london um so yeah high ambitions unrealistic ambitions to be fair in some cases but you never know and then marnie essentially she's just it's a gym it's a gym 
what's so special about her gym i don't know so both ideas for me trash um so let's see what the final is saying but i'm not really looking for i had a little preview at the end of the episode just now of what next week's tasks are going to be obviously tasks, tasks are going to be related to the idea and both the ideas are not that great so i'm not really that looking that infused about the final but you know what this has been longer than it should have been let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are who you think is going to win and how you felt about this week's interviews this year's interviews and if, you, and if you're looking forward to next week's final but yeah that was my apprentice thoughts breakdown review reaction and thank you for watching hit that like button comment subscribe and all of that jazz peace <laughs>